welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and don't worry, we're not going to play Simic Flash. It's not what we're going to do today. No, today's going to be a very different episode in the arena. A new format was announced in the MTG Arena State of the Beta, which I'm reading from yesterday, but you're going to be seeing this much later in the future. Uh, I am pre-recording stuff for travel. You've heard me say this a few times. I repeat myself a lot because you never know when somebody's watching the channel for the first time. Also, you have to say something seven times before anybody remembers it. That's normal. <laughs> that's, that's not just you. That's not just me. That's just normal. And so what happened here is I'm sitting here on the 19th of July reading the state of the beta where they've announced that there's going to be an event and that event should be live around the time this video comes out if I do my work correctly. And it will be the Sunday nearest this video. This video will come out, there will be a Sunday and it will run from Sunday to Tuesday. This event is called the Standard Shakeup. And this Standard Shakeup, they banned a bunch of cards. They banned a whole bunch of cards that you would call the meta. Uh, did Teferi get banned? Absolutely. Yes, Teferi got banned. So did Benelish Marshall, History of Benalia, Venerated Loxodon, Curious Obsession, Nexus of Fate, Command the Dreadhorde, Arclight Phoenix, Experimental Frenzy, Goblin Chain Whirler, Light Up the Stage, Rampaging Ferocidon, Rekindling Phoenix, Runaway Steamkin, Nissa, Who Shakes the Freaking World, Wild Growth Walker, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, Teferi, Time Raveler, and Thought Erasure, Hydroid Crassus, and Risen Reef have all been banned from this event called Standard Shakeup. You will play absolutely against none of those cards. You will have none of them in your deck. So, the Standard Shakeup is a free to play event. Doing it gets you EXP. And if you win, you get some awesome art for basic lands. I'm probably not even going to get to play in this because I'm going to be traveling but you will, and I'm sure many of you are wondering what to play in this event, and I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to go over three decks that didn't get hit by this ban at all. I'm going to go over three decks that are arguably powerful now and are still going to absolutely crush this event, but I'm not going to play those decks today. I'm going to show you decks that I think can compete with those decks that aren't on the radar. So you as a viewer here on the CGB channel get the inside scoop. Also a few budget options as well so that I know many of you don't want to craft a deck just to play this. We'll get you some budget options so that you can play in this event and be a little bit competitive, maybe win those basic land arts and get your EXP without having to get a whole new deck. Because part of the pain of things getting banned is definitely when you just, you put all your free to play effort into a deck and now it's no good. A lot of you out there heard that list of banned cards in red and you might be asking yourself, does that mean I can't play the only deck I crafted, which is red? We'll get into it. I think we're gonna be okay. The first deck I'm going to bring up as a current standard competitor that isn't even phased by this ban list is Simic Flash. If the comments and response to my video on this deck are any indication, this deck is very hated and reviled, but it's also very good. It will show up in this event. This has to be one of the decks you are most prepared for when you play the event. So this is my prediction for one of the decks that you have to be most ready for. Let's go to the others other decks that weren't hit by this at all. And by the way, if you have Simic Flash and like playing Simic Flash, by all means, play it in the event, along with all these decks that I show you. The ones that I say are going to be the most ready to go, you can play these. You'll probably win. The other deck that wasn't hit by the ban list in any way is Vampires. And Vampires has been getting played more and more lately and appears to be rather competitive. I wasn't a fan of Sanctum Seeker. I was wrong. This card gives the deck reach. It becomes a sort of burn deck, but with life loss. And that's really important to close the games and get those last few points of damage through. Cast Downs and Mortifies. Figure out your removal suite. In best of one, I like to use D-Spark in this spot, but maybe we don't need D-Spark anymore with Experimental Frenzy and to Fairy Hero of Dominaria and Rekindling Phoenix all being banned. I don't know that D-Spark is really very good for the main deck of the format, but that remains to be seen. Um, but Vampires is another list where if you have these cards already, 
This is going to be a very, very strong player upcoming in this event. Another very aggressive way to get those wins fast, too. So expect a lot of vampires. It might be the most popular deck. It kind of depends, because not many people are going to go back and craft the Ixalan Vampires. But I still see this deck enough on ladder that I do believe it will be out there. The third deck that we'll talk about is Boros Feather. This deck annoys people a lot, too. I, I get a lot of comments on it. It is powerful. It's a very good deck, and it is definitely playable in this event. It was hit in no way by the bands. Those all were definitely targeted at the white aggro deck. They took out Banish Marshall, History of Benalia, and Venerated Loxodon. They, they cut white aggro's legs out, but you can definitely play Feather. And I think Feather will be one of the more played decks in the event. The card, once you get it out there and then use a God's Willing or Sheltering Light to protect it, is so hard to remove that it can take over a game from that point. And the value generated by Dreadhard Arcanist, 10th District Legionnaire, it just goes crazy. Adanto Vanguard will probably be in most of the lists. For me, personally, and this is just a preference, especially in Best of One, which is what this event is, I prefer Burning Prophet a lot. I don't like Adano Vanguard in a very, 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 very aggressive meta where all the other decks are trying to smash me quickly. I like the Burning Prophet. But you might say, CGB, you said that Red got all those cards banned. So Red won't be that popular. Isn't Red the reason not to play Adanto Vanguard? Isn't it one of those big, big reasons not to play Adanto? Yep. And I don't think Red is gone. I don't think red is gone. So this is going to be uh, one of the decks that I'm going to show you. Now this is going to be a bit of talking. I am going to play some of these decks at the end. I'm going to play the decks that I haven't played before here on the channel. One is red, this version of red, the uh, Molder Hulk, and then I have an Esper deck I'm going to show you. But um, the, the Wizards, I said Molder Hulk, actually I meant Wizards. I've played Molder Hulk on the channel before. So there's going to be a lot of talking about this and that. Then we're going to play some decks. So I've got a few more to go over, but we're not going to open this box just yet. Molder Hulk is another deck that I think is pretty budgety. It's reasonable against the field. You can compete with Feather by having Plague Crafter in the deck. Kroll Forgers gives you a life boost against the Vampire Menace. Lalith Giant gives you reach. Cavalier of Thorns is awesome. Uh, this is a pretty cool part of the deck, but you can replace it. And if you do, you can replace it with the Vulture. And that might not even be right, I'm, or might not even be wrong, because the Vulture is a lot cheaper. How do you spell Vulture? I'm so bad. But Gorging Vulture can replace, replace the Cavalier of Thorns here. It's okay. And Crawl Harpooner might even need to go in here to fight Feather even more aggressively, if Feather's just going to come down on turn four. But that's mostly why we have a Plague Crafter. But yeah, the Vulture Boy. Vulture Boy is... Uh, pretty good and does a lot, some of the work of Cavalier of Thorns, but this is definitely the better card. Otherwise, it's a pretty value-y, pretty cheap option to get into without too many rares along the way. Most of you have your Jade Light Rangers. If you don't, this could also be replaced by the Vulture. So those are some examples of some adjustments you can make. More Chupas could be in the deck too, or you could run more uh, undergrowth cards like Forgers. So I like Molder Hulk for the event. I also like Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs is another deck that is definitely like lower meta right now, not tier one, but could be uh, beating down the top tier for this event. You might want to go heavier into Galta as one way to beat Feather and Vampires is just to have a big Galta go way over the top of them and otherwise play this kind of mid-rangey Enrage shell. My version isn't running Llanowar Elves. Llanowar Elves are probably going to be very, very good in this event. So you might want to cut it, but it kind of depends. Marauding Raptor eats your Llanowar Elves if the Raptor's on the field, but it's usually pretty easy to fight away the Raptor or trade away the Raptor by attacking for a bunch. So there are awkward draws with Llanowar Elves, but maybe Llanowar Elves should still be here. Hatchling is good against Red. It's decent against Vampires. It's not good against Feather. So depending on how your event is going, you may or may not want Hatchlings, but I really like this list for the event as well, and I've played some Dinos on stream. Now we're going to get in on stream on my channel. Mm. Now we're going to get into the part of the video where we play some games and talk about these other decks. The first deck I'm going to talk about is red. Red's not gone. 
Red's not gone. In fact, it got more budget friendly. Goblin Chain Whirler, Runaway Steamkin, Experimental Frenzy, and Light Up the Stage were all banned. And I had no problem throwing together a red deck that got there. This version only has six rares with two Chandra Acolytes of Flame and four Chandra Fire Artesian. Now, Vampire, here's, here's the reason I, I'm concerned about red. I think that red will do fine in the event because people will be trying new things and red always preys on new things. But the people who are trying Vampires and the people who are trying Feather, I believe will have a very good matchup against you. And there isn't a ton to be done about it. Flash can also do well against you if they draw Night Pack Ambusher. That card seems to be the key card in that particular matchup. But this version of Red still has a ton of power, and I think I can at least go play one game to show you just how crazy it can be. It's even it it goes even harder, I think, on Chandra Spitfire. So let's go do some battles. The Chandra Spitfire in this version is absolute, absolutely epic. Now stay tuned, if you hate Mono Red, just hit the 2x speed button or skip ahead in the video. Next I'm going to talk about Is It Wizards, which I think is an interesting kind of hybrid tempo burn deck that has some good matchups coming up and is also pretty budget friendly for this event without any banned cards in it. And then finally I'm going to share what a lot of you will probably want out of me, which is an updated take on Esper Control just for this event, because I believe Esper Control changes the most to participate in this event but uh, i like the changes i'm i'm excited about it we, you know i'm a control mage deep in my heart even when control's not good and it looks like we get to scrap with the vampires which is probably a good thing probably a good thing oh pride mate yeah that's gotta die bye bye could have also shocked the 1-1 one -one and then struck the Pride Mate, but I want to get a creature on the board. And this is where Ember Hauler's second point of toughness is helpful, as it kind of brick walls this little token. Unless the opponent wants to play a Marshal, they sure do. That's okay. We can strike that Marshal down. Alright. Unfortunately, we stalled on land, so we can't also play this Lava Runner and get in there. And attacking doesn't make a lot of sense because holding back the life linker seems to be a lot better when there's a six life point differential. History of Benalia. They're playing banned cards. Make them stop with all the banned cards. Just kidding, of course. But a few self-imposed restrictions might cost me this game, but the main thing I want to show is that red is still here and that the red deck can play. This is definitely a game where Chandra Spitfire is going to have to steal some points. If they have the venerated Loxodon, oh my god. But they don't. So, hmm. I could kill both of these knights. I actually think it's better to take the hit from the knights, though, and get more creatures on the board. So here's a Vyashino Pyromancer. Deal the two points. Power up the Spitfire. Get in there for a lot. <laughs> Four points. Healer's Hawk with a chump block. I'm stunned. It gets a, like the Spitfire might get bigger than that. Let's get the Lava Runner down. I thought about playing Lava Runner first and cracking in with it. Maybe that would have been right. I talked myself out of it because I didn't really want to trade it for a token and a hawk. A hawk? Although I guess trading it for a hawk would have been fine. I definitely would have traded it for a knight to avoid taking this damage, I think. It's gonna leave a mark. The opponent wasn't willing to throw away their lifelink token to flip the landing, even though they have five lands. I found that pretty surprising. They're looking in the graveyard. Is this brought back? Okay, that is brutal. And epic. But it... Where's the... Okay, there it is. Our opponent was choosing which legendary permanent to keep. So that's gonna leave a mark. Let's keep plinking away and trying to get there with the Spitfire. Let's keep the leaving the 2-2 back. The 2-2s have to at least make it awkward to do things with the, the vampire tokens. Oh, 
Okay. Let's get the lifelinkers off the board, I suppose. And let's trade off with the knights. I find it surprising the opponent's willing to trade away some of those knight tokens this turn for pyromancers. I guess they think they'll have a better attack next turn. And it's my turn, okay. Here is another Lava Runner. We have a, sh we have a Strike available. This can block a token if we don't want to attack with it. I could definitely send a Lava Runner. Or could I? Let's see. The opponent's hand is either a land or another brought back. I think they'd play just about anything that they drew. So if that's a 4-3, that's a 4-3. I could block here, shoot something that I blocked with one of these. That's both knights. One knight's dead. One knight remains. And that's another 1-1. One, one. So yeah, I think this is an opportunity to go lava running. Try to save the lightning strike, but we'll see. It may just be better to use the lightning strike on one of these knights and go down to something low like two. Breaking on two Chandras has been pretty painful. Game definitely could have been a little different. Jesus. Banned cards! Banned cards. Opponent playing that pre combat does give me some idea of how to handle this combat, though. So, you here, you here, lock, strike one away, go to two, staying alive, staying alive. And it's another land. So, two attackers next turn, gotta make sure we have that covered. Ember Hall is sort of can, it can just chump and fetch which would let me get him for more damage this turn. But that's not particularly great. Spitfire goes for seven. Let's see, next turn, block here. Don't really want to chump block, so I, let's see. Did the opponent block the Ember Hauler, do you think? Ember Hauler really wants to go face. I suppose if the opponent blocks the Ember Hauler, it's one less thing for me to worry about. I could also just always Lightning Strike it. Yeah, let's do this. This way, if the opponent wants to swing in, we can always like block Sack with Ember Hauler or Lightning Strike down one of the creatures. Okay, the opponent is trying to grind me out, but... Their blocks are really aggressive. It's kind of surprising to me. They could still run out of gas here, even with all the history of Benalias. It's possible. Or they might draw perfect and, you know, nothing bad happens, but it's worth giving it a shot. Opponent without a good attack. They do it anyway. Huh. Weird attack. Let's block and let's strike face. I mean, it's essentially the lightning strike killing this and getting damage to the opponent, which I guess is good enough. Another night down. Now there's only one to go, and the Ember Hauler can deal. That Law Rune Enforcer is really annoying, though. Okay, the opponent scoops. So that attack was going to be super awkward, because they could tap one of my things, and I'd have to chump block the knight, but then hopefully Chandra would carry. Ugh. But that was a weird game. Um, Did not deserve to win that game, I don't think. But, you know, videos. Videos are fun. So there was our gameplay. 
Mono red is still around. Don't be afraid to, one, use it if you have to. If it's one of your favorite pet decks, you can play it. But here's a version that is kind of like mono red, but a little bit more resilient. And I think it's a little bit format stronger. It has some card draw. God Eternal Kefna is a house in this deck. This is a, basically an updated version of Andrew Cuneo's Wizards list with a few changes. Lightning Stormkin is an awesome 2-2 haste flyer that you can bring in that joins the squad. Adds to the haste flying get damage in part of the deck. Chart of course can draw some cards. Lava Coil, I have two of those in here because of Feather. Something has to kill Feather if they feel a need to play it on curve. But this deck has a secret hidden way to stop the Feather deck. Simply hit a Wizard's Retort on that Feather. Wizard's, Wizard's Retort, also very good against Sorin. If the opponent's going to Sorin you. And uh, the other big deck of the format is another Flash Tempo style deck. Wizard's Retort can be very important for interacting with that deck. Nightpack Ambusher is another big thing that needs to be dealt with. So this is an interesting deck that I think could be competitive and is pretty budget friendly. There are a lot of rare lands, but these could be guild gates or you could just turn probably like four of these rare lands into two islands, two mountains without too much of a cost. Honestly, we're overdoing it on the rare lands in the deck, but that's because sometimes we need two blue and sometimes we need a whole bunch of red. It all depends. Dreadhorde Arcanist is a rare, but you won't, you won't regret having this card around. This is a fun card that's gonna be part of the format for a long time. And God Eternal Kefnet is a mythic, but it's mythically awesome. You could also use Naru Meha or something else in this spot, but I love God Eternal Kefnet, especially in this deck where the value is completely wild. So let's go try this one out. This Wizards deck could have been its own deck tech. I didn't feel it got too much new from the new set, and I don't play Wizards as often as some people. But who knows, maybe before the next set releases we'll do a Wizards deck tech just all to itself. But in this in this standard shakeup event with the bands that are there, maybe Wizards is in a decent place now and has a lot of evasion and can do really powerful things if the opponents don't interact with Adelie's right on time. Also, God Eternal Kefnet might be in a really good spot. Like, that card is also a boss. Seems nice. I'm a little worried about the mana. But since most of the lands in the deck are dual lands, the mana should get nice and warm as soon as we draw one more. Mm-hmm. Okay. No early wizards. Lots of removals. Playing kind of like a Drake's List. All right. The Cavalcade of Calamity. I don't have a bunch of sweepers to punish that. What gets discarded? This deck's going to have a lot of really small things. At least the Cinderwind is an argument that could be discarded, but combining it with Arcanist is so good. One more land plays God Eternal Kefnet, which is probably great. Removal spells are solid. I honestly think it's Wizard's Retort, because I don't think we're going to have a good spot to hold up the Retort, and even if we do, I don't know if we'll have something good to counter. Cavalcade of Calamity specializes in a bunch of very small creatures, and this critter. Here we go. Well, the opponent's probably breathing a sigh of relief that the card is alive, but we're going to play a Dreadhorde Arcanist. We have a Wizard's Lightning available. Let's make the opponent commit to some Cavalcade nonsense, and then we can go for the Lightning. He is a dodgy boy. So the opponent can pay a red to make it so it can't be blocked. Here we go. Now the real question is, does the opponent run Infuriate to infuriate me? First though, we'll, uh, we'll just kind of let this play out. I'm taking one more damage than I had to because of the Chandra Cavalcade thing, but I do just want to kind of give you an idea of how wild this gets if you don't already know. That stage got lit. There is another Spitfire, I think. Yep. So if the opponent's going to spend their turn playing Spitfire, we can spend our turn getting Adelie's going. We have this double shock value that we could have done, but let's just warm it up for next turn. Next turn we'll be able to grow our Arcanist 
burn a whole bunch of things and flash back the wizard's lightning, I think. All right. I mean, I'm going to take a little bit of damage, but then the opponent's going to lose their board. And they're going to take a ton of damage, too. Think of Adelie as like a cavalcade of calamity, but a little crazier. First things first. Let's take you out. Could have just gone face, but I think it's a two-turn clock either way. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there was a way I could have had the lethals. So chart, of course, is an interesting one, or I could just go to the face with the wizard's lightning, or I could kill the opponent's last creature. I'm going to go with the chart, of course. Play the value game. I should have mathed this turn, though. I might have been able to get eight more damage in. If I shock the face, that's down to four. And then if I bring a shock back from the yard, that's another four. Yeah, I missed what would have been an epic lethal, thinking that I'll just get some value. That's a classic CGB right there. But I know better for next time. Always be learning. You can laugh at me all you want, but I'm gonna keep learning. All right, Calamity. Anything else? I think our opponent has a shock, but it could just be the Dodgers activation that's holding the priority this whole time. And they did play a shock, so, eh. All right, you're at eight. You have a war boss. This can flash back what? A shock. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The problem with that is, does the war boss block? If the war boss blocks, I could strike it down. Being at nine is a little close. A lot could still go wrong. This is what I get playing the value game. The game gets stretched out over a couple more turns. I'm just gonna try to remove the crucial threats and hope to buy a little more time to finish this game. And yeah, instead of going face, I'm going to remove permanence again, but I fought the wrong battle. I should have combo killed the face two turns ago. Now I'm committed to the value game. I'm at least going to play it out and see if it gets me there. And a close one. Five. This, that'll do it. Unless the opponent has exactly one more perfect removal spell at the right time, but they would have to be able to do, what, kill the Adelies with that in the stack? That wouldn't even do it. So that's game. Whiz bangs. Pew pew. Love it. The last deck I'm going to talk about today is one that brings a lot of joy to my heart. What's interesting is that the cards that were banned from Esper Control, let me just go over those again. Just as a reminder, what was banned? Nexus of Fate, though that wasn't always in, that was rarely in Esper, but it was definitely a thorn in Esper's side. Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, Teferi, Time Raveler, and Thought Erasure are the key ones banned out of Esper control. The thing about that is those cards also were so good against Esper control, like in the mirror, that it dictated the way you had to build Esper control. And Esper Control got away from a counter spell and removal base package to a traction on the board Planeswalker style deck that won with an Elder Spell to Fairy sort of combo and Command the Dreadhorde, which by the way, Command the Dreadhorde also banned. With Teferi Time Raveler out of the format, with Thought Erasure out of the format, counter spells work again. This is going to make that Simic Flash deck unbearable, I promise you. But it also makes Esper Control a contender once more. What you can do now with Esper Control is run, go back to running Absorb, Dovin's Veto, Chemister's Insight, drawing some cards, uh, Vraska's Contempt, and interacting a ton at instant speed while sitting back and gaining value with Searcher's Kanta and Chemister's Insight until you can set up a big endgame. Now that endgame is gone. The inevitability of Hero of Dominaria is gone. You are no more. 
but we can use something else. What I'm going with for this deck is Liliana Dreadhorde General, who can just overcome the aggro decks on her own, or act as almost a Wrath with a minus four to kill two creatures. So I'm playing her, but if we end up in a control mirror, we need a way for Liliana to stick around long enough to win the game. And if the opponent has seven removal spells in their hand, and like five of them hit Planeswalkers because they've just been waiting for you to drop Liliana, then you're in trouble. Enter Thought Distortion. The spell can't be countered. Target opponent reveals their hand. Exile all non-creature, non-land cards from that player's hand. So if we're in a control battle, we will basically grind away with Search for Iskanta, hopefully, and Chemister's Insight until we cast Thought Distortion, wipe their hand of all that cool stuff, then we play our Liliana, protect it with counter spells for a few turns, should be able to take over the game. Now, I talked earlier about D-Spark. I am not sure that D-Spark is where you want to be in the format, but I still need some way to interact with Planeswalkers. It's possible that we could run an Elder Spell in this position, something of that nature, but for now I'm going to stick with D-Spark. I just, I'm, I'm nervous that it won't be very good against Simic, Flash, Vampires, or Boros, Boros Feather, which are the decks that I think the spiky tryhards are going to port right over and play. Something that is very good against Boros Feather and is good against uh, Adanto. Something that's good against Adanto Vanguard and Small Vampires is Disfigure. Something that is very good against Feather is Liliana's Triumph. Liliana's Triumph says each opponent sacrifices a creature. If you control Liliana Planeswalker, they discard a card. So all the God's Willings and Sheltering Lights in the world will not protect the opponent's creatures from Liliana's Triumph. And if dinosaurs make a comeback, this will also hit, hopefully, if you blow up all the other things, Shifting Ceratops, and Carnage Tyrant, which can be big headaches as well. So I'm really interested to see this card shine, especially with some Dreadhorde Generals in my deck, to make it an instant speed discard effect as well. We're going to go try it. The format is certainly hostile to this style of deck right now. Teferi Time Raveler is a beating on it. Thought Erasure makes it really tough to set up your endgame. So I'm not optimistic that we're going to do great in a lot of the matchups we might see today. But I think in the standard showdown event, a list like this could do very well. And since I won't get to play it myself, uh, the standard shakeup event is what I meant. Sorry, excuse me. But since I won't get to play this list in that event myself, by all means, please go out and uh, play some games with this deck and post your results for me. I would love to hear about it in my Discord. There's a link there. You can also tweet at me if you use the list. Um, so. All the links are in the description, how to get a hold of me while I'm on vacation. Let me know how it goes. Let's go try this out. Also, I have Nezahal the Primal Tide as my avatar. That's an emotional thing. I really wanted Nezi to be my win con, but Nezi just didn't work out. The opponent, like, the um, thought erasing the six mana card I can I can't remember the name of without in front of me that makes them discard all their cards that are not creatures <laughs> doesn't hit Chupacabra like Nezahal just folds to Chupacabra let's try this hand out it's a lot of Shockland like a lot of Shockland holy cow now I think I'll enter tapped I'm not going to put the opponent unnecessarily playing something that makes me disfigure right away. I also don't know if I'll need a veto right away. Oh, I'm against Feather? Oh, this is perfect. Watch me get my butt kicked. Just invalidate all I've worked for. But, yeah. Let's kill that right away. We did draw the Kai's Wrath. Pretty rock solid. We also have Dovin's Veto to interact with a God's Willing on the stack if we need to. Earning Profit. Hey, somebody else likes the Profit. Actually, I actually saw a competitive Magic player and streamer Jim Davis had a list in Fandom Legends with Burning Profit, and I was like, he agrees with me. We are of the same mind. Red Horde Arcanist. We're, we're getting ready to wrap this board. Although there's no feather, and this isn't much damage, and it doesn't do much, so I could definitely wait. I don't have to interact yet. Yeah, let's do. Let's try to get this chemist's insight resolved and have more options before we wrath. I think I'm unlikely to get the opponent to play another creature, but they probably are going to start messing around with their pump spells. 
So they might get a really good hit in on me. Oh, well, that worked out really well. Part of the advantage we have going for us here is that people who know the meta don't expect this style of Esper anymore. They play right into Dovin's Vetoes, right into Absorbs. My chemistry's insights go well, you know, things like that. So should I blow up this, or should I resolve an insight? I think I should, I, I think getting the two for one here and leaving the opponent without a threat is good. I do think that Dispark might be terrible in the matchup. We need our opponent to have like an Aurelia, Exemplar of Justice in the deck for Dispark to be good. And not every list runs that. I think mine is only running one. Sometimes they run an Ixalan's Binding. There's still no spells in the graveyard. Vraska's Contempt off the top. Let's just keep playing out the tap lands. See if the opponent can get value out of their Arcanist and hit me with it. Tajik. Is this going to be a God's Willing? If it's a sheltering light, I'm okay. I guess I'd prefer to hit the Tajik. The Arcanist still doesn't have anything to get back. Or I could let them attack and put the Arcanist trigger on the stack with nothing in the graveyard and then go for the Contempt. That's probably better. It might resolve, it, it'll result in this mentorship happening, but at least it makes sure that they don't get value. Tajik on his own is just a 3-2. It is a quicker clock, though. Arcanist doesn't have anything to get back that I care about at 2 mana. So yeah, I'll go after you. Now we probably see a God's Willing. Sheltering Light? That won't do it. That won't do it. All right. Let's hit a scry land with Temple of Silence. Nice. Very, very nice, huh? We can wait on the insight. Definitely looking good for the Wrath. You want to bring back Sheltering Light and get a scry, that's okay with me. Get a few scries and some extra damage. The thing we could draw with the inside is a Dovin's Veto, a Liliana's Triumph. Neither one are what I want to do here, not with a Kai's Wrath sitting on top of the deck. We're scrying to the bottom. Down to nine. Feel a lot better if I could find an Absorb. Ooh, the Dreadhorde General. God, do I miss the style of Esper. You can call me sick if you want to, but I really like this style. Boom. Let's get out of Nas Kanta. Let's put this in tapped. And then next turn, we can flip his Kanta and get that going. There's Feather. Opponent's been trying to hold out on it, but Graveyard, Transform, Disfigure off the top. Let's let Liliana do the work. Sacrifice Critter. Nice. There's the Aurelia! Oh my gosh! Everything's coming up CGB. Um, they could have a God's Willing, but make them have it. And that's the scoop. The scoop we deserve. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this look at the upcoming standard shakeup format, the talk about the bands list. You can, I'll try to remember to put a link to those bands in the description. It's gonna be hard with me traveling to go back once this video is finally edited and uploaded uh, to remember it, but I will try. Uh, if I don't, you can always mention it in comments and I'll try to throw it on there or tweet at me, but the ban list should be pretty available. Uh, you can Google like state of the beta July 7th, 
20 or July 18th 2019 god I'm horrible I'm the worst cut this outro I'm just kidding don't cut it so anyway uh I really I would definitely be sleeping up old school esper and probably some wizards when I'm feeling more aggressive and don't want to play long games expect a lot of vampires expect a lot of feather expect a lot of simic flash don't let it get to you have decks that can compete um also try some gold to dinos you might just be able to go right over the top and smash those decks that's my take on that upcoming event and how to attack that metagame. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps a lot. Please leave me some comments. These things make a big difference in my life, so I appreciate it very much. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.